started rolling. Um, what is melanin and what is carbon? Tell us about those two minerals or whatever they are. Melanin is not a mineral. Okay. Melanin is a word that was used to describe a certain biological function. But that particular identification or category or thing, melanin, is a European identification of what they think activates those neurons in our body that makes us black. But when you break down our body, our biological structure into what we would have to put it in, which is chemistry, biochemistry, melanin has no place. It's not to be found. What is found in the body that is attributed to melanin is carbon. Carbon not only determines the quality of life in black folks, carbon determines the quality of life in every living plant that exists that is natural. If carbon is absent, there's no life. Melanin, what is it? I don't know. Well, why are white people trying to get some? It's a Greek word, melanos. <laughs> well, white folks talk about protein. What is protein? They say one of the 19 amino acids, the building blocks of life. But I know for a fact that that is not a true statement. Because protein, if it was the building block of life, what happened to the gorilla that lives 180 years without eating anything that's contained protein? Unless they're gonna say that the plants contain protein too. They're always saying things. And because we have no laboratories, Thank you. To investigate those things, then we have to swallow it hook, line, and sinker. Miss Frances Welsing mentioned melanin. And I ask her, what is this thing? And I know she could not adequately answer the question because she was trained by someone European. So when you are trained by a European and told these things, you have to regurgitate these things. But no, they are completely in error. Okay, we're going to take a little break for the phone. We have to be careful. Remember, it is like a brother recommended that you use comfrey for your bones. That is in the books. I'm from a European philosopher, from a European philosophical base. But when you look at the comfrey bit, you find a comfrey contains starch. Again, another European philosophy. Melanin falls under the same category. It is a belief, not a reality. I was told in Washington, D.C. that I was violating one of the most sacred code or law of, of nutrition when I deprive a kilo stroud of protein. So I asked Dr. Steinberg and Dr. Glut at the Georgetown Pediatric Hospital, did you give her protein five times a day? You did. Was she under your care for two years? Yes. Now she did not receive any of those things that you call protein and she no longer has sickle cell anemia. Mm. So where is the validity? of this thing we call protein. Is it equity or is it deficit? We don't know. This is why Dr. Sebi, when he embarked on this journey of healing, many was asking me, well, why are you so concerned with the scientific aspect of this thing? I say it is necessary not to heal. To heal it is necessary to understand the scientific aspect of it. But you must understand the herb that correspond with the disease that is manifesting. And the only way you could do that in the Western world, and to prove that, that you would be respected as someone that could be of usefulness, is to 
enhance oneself with the words that describe certain things. And that is the science of biochemistry. I had to, because my challenges would be from a scientific base. And if I didn't understand science, then I would be lost. And they would gain momentum when they should not. So I decided to go into the scientific understanding of these things we call herbs. And what we found, that there is nothing on the planet that assimilate and could be of usefulness, save that substance is electrical. And the only electric substance on the planet is a natural plant. Not comfrey, golden seal, peppermint, aloe vera, and the rest, they are hybrids. But how many brothers and sisters in America or any way in the world qualifies to offer a challenge when we have nothing to test that which we are given for validity? No, I do not subscribe to melanin or to comfrey. So we have to again go back to the drawing board. The Usha research disregard the word melanin. For instance, if melanin determined life, why is it then that when people come to us with nerve problems, with energy problems, we give them the substance known as iron, which is a mineral. Straining that iron with carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, the CHO chain, is the chain of life. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Melanin has no place in that biochemical structure. So I'm very extremely sorry. Okay, let me ask you a question then. What makes the difference between black and white? That what, why is it you're colored and there's somebody else who's not colored, of color? Well, again, we could easily explain that position. Carbon is the determining factor for your color. The concentration of carbon determines the color black. The higher the concentration of carbon, the greater the color black would express. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. It is carbon, nothing else. Excellent. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Sebi, explain to the people watching this tape the word electric, electricity, and how it pertains to <clears throat> its necessity uh, boundaries within the body structure. Now, you see? Now, that was the best question that could have been asked. Why? Because if something is of usefulness in my structure, in my biological structure, it must necessarily be electrical. And the only substance that is electrical, that are electrical, are those substances that come from the forest we call the jungle. Because the molecular structure is complete, it's not broken. If something is made by Mother Nature, one could easily use the common sense and see where this stuff is natural, is complete. But if something is made in the laboratory, well, naturally, common sense again shows us it could not be of usefulness. Each mineral on the planet, iron has 12,000 electrons per atom, calcium has 9,000, opium has this specific amount, and so it goes to the whole ramification of life. 142 minerals expresses themselves in a different way because that is necessary to maintain continuity to maintain that individuality of each plant. The bones is calcium, not the blood. The blood is iron. Now we go back to the question of melanin. Wouldn't it be intelligent to ask one of the promoters of melanin, what is the electromagnetic structure of melanin? What is the amount of electrons per atom that represent this thing we call melanin? Why do we ask the question? Because it is necessary. 
We want to know, is this thing electrical? Yes. Well, if it is electrical, it has to have a definite amount of electrons per atom representing that particular thing. Okay, let me ask you on that same subject. Let's say the generator that, that gives us electricity here in this city was cut off and we wanted to get more electricity. What will we do? Will we stick one end in the ground or how would how we work? Stick one in the ground? A wire. No. What produces electricity? Electrons. No way. I was an electrician. I am an engineer. I work in what you call steam generating plants. I have a degree. I have a license in what is known as thermodynamics. We are dealing with physics now. The only thing that produces electricity, the only thing that produces electricity is the friction of copper and carbon. That could be seen in your automobile, take out your generator and see what it, what it has inside. It has a copper wheel and some carbon brushes that touches against it when it turns. Here's an example. This is the copper wheel in the generating plant that produced the electricity in this room. It is spinning at only 90 revolutions per minute. But against this copper wheel, there are carbon brushes. And this is what you see. The spinning of the copper wheel against the carbon brush creates a friction. That friction is called resonance. Resonance is electricity, not electrons. Resonance. The resonance produces the electrons, not before. So now, if electricity is produced by copper and carbon, the friction of copper and carbon, then where do we go in the human body and find the organ that produces electricity? We find that it's the brain. The brain is the center of motor. The nervous system is the conduit that carries the electricity to various points of the body to cause motion. Now, should we ask what is the composition of the brain? No. It is made up of what? Carbon and copper. The pineal gland is carbon and the cerebral cortex, copper. We not only find that in a human being, we find that in the eel in Brazil that produces electricity to kill his prey. And when you open the eel, all you find is copper and carbon. No melanin. <laughs> <laughs> well, does everybody have a pineal gland? I was told the other day that everybody doesn't have one. Is that true or not? If you had no pineal gland, you would not be alive. You would be no motion. It's impossible. Every race has pineal glands. Not every race has thymus glands. Oh, that's different. Oh, yeah. Well, tell us about those. The thymus glands. The thymus gland regulates sex. It also maintains energy. The thymus gland also keeps you childlike, non-aggressive. But in some races, the thymus gland disappears at age eight then one becomes violent in one movement. But now, if the thymus gland disappear in some races at age eight, principally the Caucasian, what helps one to retain the thymus gland within the biology? The presence of what? Carbon. Thank you. <laughs> He has a question. Right. So, Dr. Sabi, what you're saying is that due to the way uh, a lot of medical people study medicine in this country and around the world, they don't understand the difference between, say, electricity and something that's electric. Well, if we are talking about understanding, what do they understand? Because the question needs to be asked, remember, the time for common sense has arisen has arrived. What do they understand? Don't be afraid. 
We need to ask these questions. What do they understand? No cure for common cold. No cure for diabetes. No cure for cancer, leukemia, sickle cell anemia, AIDS, blindness, diabetes, and no other disease. Well, if the physician clearly show us that there is no cure for any disease, what do they understand? So we have to throw that understanding or whatever that premise is out the window. Everything that have ever come from the Caucasian, no, from the physician, has to be thrown in the trash. Because it's of no consequence. What have they done as far as usefulness in reference to pathology? What have they done? What have they reversed? Nothing. So why should a word be authority? No, we can't use them as some level of thinking, development, or seeing. No, we can't do that because they don't have that. They showed us. How old is the medicine that they are practicing today? It is 265 years old. It started with Bombastus von Hohenheim, only because he was prejudiced when he found out that Hippocrates went to Africa to learn his craft. And the fact of the matter is that Mr. Hippocrates, 2,000 years ago, used herbs to cure every disease known to man. If Mr. Hippocrates used herbs to cure every disease known to man, then, 2,000 years later, why aren't we doing so? Ah, because the healer has been educated and the substance he used is artificial. And he is totally unaware of that. Why? Because he learned his craft from an armchair position. They, 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 they call it armchair research, not field research. And that is very, very vitally important to know the herb from a field perspective, from a field position. Why? Because in the year of 1983, I sent Mr. Adisa Akil to St. John Herb Store in Silver Spring, Maryland, and asked him to buy me a pound of bugleweed. Why did I want the bugleweed? Because someone came to me with a very bad heart problem. They call it mitral stenosis. The weakening of the muscle of the heart also exists. I said, buy me a pound of bugleweed because I have to address this particular disease. When Adisa came back with the bugleweed, I opened the bag. I said, where is the bugleweed? He says, in the bag. I said, no, that is not bugleweed. What is it? I said, that's blue vervain. How do you know? Because I tasted it and it's sweet and I could look at it. <laughs> That's why I could tell. I didn't learn herbs reading a book. That's what the herbalist does in New York and the United States. So I said, take me back to the store. So he took me back to St. John Herb store. And there, the young lady, which was black, said to me, well, how do you know that this isn't bugle weed? My boss been selling herbs for 25 years. I said, young lady, your boss may be selling herb for 125 years. This isn't bugleweed. Call your boss. The boss came. What's the problem? I said, I don't think there's a problem. There's never been a problem with me. I just don't have those things. But you sold me something that was supposed to be one thing as another. How do you know? Because I know this is not bugleweed. Bugleweed is bitter. Bitter as gall, and this is sweet. And bugleweed has, in intervals of an inch, has a little ball on the plant. A little ball. Every inch it has a little ball. This has no ball. I said, would you please go and see if the bag that was sent to you that said blue vervain could possibly be the bugleweed? And she goes inside, and guess what happened? The bags were mislabeled. And she apologized. But if I had not known about the herbs and learned about them in the proper way, she would have snowed me. I could give anybody in New York any herb and say it is this or that. They don't know. Because the very herbalist, when I came to New York just 15 years ago, one day telling their recipients to 
drink carrot juice? Didn't they tell the recipient to take golden seal? Well, when you does such a thing, you are showing and telling the world that you don't know what you're doing. And this is what happened to me when I went on WLIB. And I told the audience at, the, at WLIB that carrots were artificial. They all denied me. One year later, when Nova came up with the program, that not only was it artificial, they showed that it was made by crossing the Queen Anne lace and the wild yam. You do not mix herbs unless they belong to the same valence. What do I mean by that? I mean this. In the kingdom of life, a yarrow plant, which is known as the Queen Anne lace, could only and will only pollinate another queen and lace. Why? Because the pollen carries the same amount of valence as the other. And through that process we know as chemical affinity, they join. Now, there is another mixture that we are totally unaware of beside the natural one, which is chemical affinity. The other one is <coughs> A mechanical mixture. What is a mechanical mixture? A mechanical mixture is when you cut a sliver in a plant, like the Queen Anne lace, and you cut a sliver in another plant, and you take out the heart of the stem, and you put it inside the Queen Anne lace, and you tape it. That is hybridization. Black people knows nothing about this. And now this plant produces something other than what it was originally because now you're uniting Queen Anne lace with wild yam. You don't get the wild yam or the Queen Anne lace. You get what? A carrot. They went further to show that it was made in Holland. And a little before that article came out, I had returned to the drawing board to find this carrot. I knew it was artificial. Why? Because it doesn't produce seed to reproduce itself. Carrot just does not produce a seed that reproduces itself. So I knew it was artificial. And beside that, it contains starch. When I go back to do my research, guess what I found? That the German made the lamb, the German made the barley, I said, oh, no. This is why the Arabs are so indebted to Germany. Because the Germans make the Arab food. The Arabs have no food, you know. Arabia? Arabia never had food. Mm. Arabia doesn't have food now. Nowhere in Arabia you find natural food. Everything the Arabs eat, the very Koran that they read came out of Germany. Also their food. If the German removed the food from the Arab, they starve to death. Oh, this is nasty, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, it's, oh, oh, oh. it's treacherous. You know what we're going to do? We're going to take a slight break here, and then we're going to continue. So if anybody has any questions... Write it down. Get it ready, because we got about... Hit bait. Because there's nothing what? Go what? They never had anything now to in Arabia. You are... He continues on. And what was that last point that you were making? Or does anybody know? Or is there a question? The Arabs. I a, all about the Arabs. Uh, Arabia has no food. You see, many of us blacks hold the Arabs supreme. Not in my book. Because how could someone eat... and be smart when the very food that you eat influences the brain to allow you to think and if you eat the wrong food you're going to think the wrong things and that again is common sense if you take a diesel automobile and put in it gasoline what happens it can run it cannot run if you just put gasoline in, in a diesel engine Oh, no, 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 I didn't hear that part. Question. You can't. 
<laughs> so the human body responds the same way. The black race has never had anyone to really show us what we should or should not eat. The only man that came was messenger of Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The only man that said, stay away from the pork. And when Isebi sat and ate with the messenger in his house on 38, 37 South Woodlawn Avenue in Chicago, the messenger personally told me and Brother Harry Nan from New Orleans that we should not be eating meat at all. Well. And we should not be eating anything on this menu because it is poisonous to us. But if he, the messenger of Allah, Elijah Muhammad, had told the black, had told the black race of the United States to stop everything, who would listen then? So he had to just, he couldn't call turkey us. He was very intelligent. He removed the pork. And just by removing the pork and many other little things, they rebelled and they said they wasn't going to jump to eat the pork. Telling us that we have been conditioned think of brainwashing I'm talking about that conditioning they have made us addicts which black person in America eats food that is consistent with their African ancestry don't even go there because none then we go to the Maya Honduras where I was born this Latin American country I asked the question to one of the uh, guides that take the tourists in and out the ruins and explaining about the Maya I asked him, sir, do you mind if I ask a question? He said, no. What did the Maya eat? A lady who was part of the tour, the group, jumped up and said, corn, of course. The man looked at me and looked at the lady and said, lady, if the Maya ate corn, this man here would not have asked that question. He would have known that. So there is something about that corn that we have to question. Oh, no, no. Then he turned back to me and he said, <laughs> what did they eat? I said, I could, be link, I could begin with the Teosinte, the Cablote, I could be, the Chipiling. These are natural greens that grows in the forest of Honduras. Natural greens that grows in the forest. The Teosinte is a plant that produces a kernel that looks like a corn but the difference is, it is non-starch. They make the tamales from the teosinte, and they mix the chipiling in there, which is a green, and they make these tamales, and they still do in Santa Rosa de Copan. And when you all come to Honduras, I will introduce you guys to these tamales. That's right, all natural. The Maya did not eat corn, rice, beans, chicken, eggs, pork, cows. Why? because these things did not exist in Honduras when Christopher Columbus came. They only ate those things that were natural. But the guide knew that he didn't know what the Maya ate. And how many Africans in Africa knows what their ancestors ate? They don't know. What does the African eat today? Rice. Mm -hmm. That's all they have. And rice is a poison. Chicken. Not only is it starch and it is because it contains and it converts into carbonic acid, but it contains cyanide. Mm -hmm. Well, how is it those little um, I'm going to say something wrong here. Uh, the knees people, like Chinese, Japanese, them, them people, how they eat it every day? But what about that? Because they eat it every day. Are they the healthiest people on the planet? No. You never seen a Chinese or a Japanese walk straight. <laughs> His spine just cannot hold up straight. He always walk with a drop in his spine. He just can't do it. He eats nothing but starch. The Chinese should give credit and a lot of credit <coughs> to the Italian that went down there with his name Marco Polo. Because at least he took them the, the wheat kernel that they could make their noodles before, uh, before this man, what is his name, the, uh, the Italian Marco Polo, Chinese could make noodles. Hmm. What about their Buddhist monks or whatever, Confucius, but they, still eating the, they were still eating the same poison? What else do they have to eat? 
And there's only one man came out of China that understood that, was Dr. Lee Cheng Fu. Dr. Lee didn't need anything to grow under the ground. No, he didn't. He just didn't do that. And Dr. Lee, according to the history of 125 years, you see, 165 years, and he died here in New York. Or it was recorded in New York, he died in China. But he was a Chinaman that I respect. Like when I go to India, I talk to Raja Gopalachari. He's a friend of mine who lives in Calcutta. And he look at all the Indians, he say they all are dead. I said, why, look at what they eat. I said the same I say about Africa. That's why there isn't one African leader that I respect. I can't respect any African leaders. Because I know his head is confounded. Why? Because look at what he eats. Is fish good? Fish rots in the contestants. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's where the worms go. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Anything that walk, crawls, swim, or fly, and that has a head, <laughs> should not enter my sister. <laughs> But he does worse than that. Because he recommends things that are more acid than that which you eat that have a head. Speaking of that, Dr. Say, I want to ask you some questions. Um, my name is Marcus Scott Lewis. I'm just a humble, burned out, recovering activist, um, writer, and poet. And the questions I would like to ask you is, with this with this new age movement out here, with these all these European herbologists and all these writers, um, do you, rec you, you wouldn't recommend any of these books or any of these teachings? Now everyone's going back to nature, quote unquote, and heading to all these herbology stores and buying all these products and things. Our people are still confused because of lack of the correct information and misinformation which we receive so could you give us a little starter on what we should be doing and what things we need to stay away from? heading to the forest yeah. All right. heading to the forest with someone that came from the forest that we have not had because some of the best advisors in the united states counselors nutritionists and doctors trained our brother by the name of Dick Gregory. All right now. Well... Did he recommend the Bahamian diet? The answer is yes. And what did the Bahamian diet consist of as a base? Soybean. And didn't Mr. George Washington Carver made plastics out of soybean? Yes. So how could he <laughs> give us the Bahamian diet that is soybean based in the name of nutrition, but we cannot blame the Gregory, because he's our brother, that I know he loves us, and we love him. But he was ill-trained. The student could only regurgitate that which was learned from the teacher. And if the teacher is poorly educated, then the student likewise. Well, do you think you could start teaching us more now that you've... Uh, she wants to ask you a question too, but I want to get this in real quick. Uh, in that you are a teacher, and I look at one of your old, um, one of your old tapes, and I saw how you talked about the carrot and different things, even certain potatoes. I think and sweet potatoes is all right, but but the white potatoes is not any good. No, I didn't say that sweet potato was all right. That was made too. But there's a certain kind of um, the red potato, the the red rose that was found in Lake Titicaca in Peru. Mm -hmm. That is where the Irish people became acquainted and took it back to Ireland. Because remember, the Irish people were the first to go to Peru. They did a lot of research in Peru, and they did a lot of things in Peru. And when they found this potato, they took it back to Ireland, and they began to hybridize the potato and get what you call the russet potato, the red rose, but the natural potato looked like the red rose. The red rose, I would recommend that you eat that because it's the first, first generation away from the mother, from the base, which came from Lake Titicaca, not a sweet potato. A sweet potato has such a high concentration of nitrogen that it would really, be, you know, 
the havoc in the system. Have you written a book? No, I'm writing one of it. It's right in that bag. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. good. So when it's finished, when you take it out the bag, I won't mm -hmm. read it. The bag has these tapes that need to be transcribed. Oh, okay. And it will be transcribed as soon as possible to be put into book form right. because the book is needed. Yeah. We have been misled not only by the foreigners that are not part of our race that dictates to us and tell us what we should and should not eat, right. but we were also hoodwinked by our brothers that was trained by those people. Well, well. <laughs> the gorilla does not eat the food of a lion, okay. but the black race eat the food of a lion. True. <laughs> so we can't eat Chinese food. Well, we can't eat Caucasian food. We are not Caucasian. We are not Chinese. We are black. Yeah. And what does that mean? Well, I use the word black, and, and I use that too loosely, because I don't like the word. What's a good word? I don't even know. Why call it ourselves anything? The shadows. <laughs> no, I am. You call me Negro. You call me nigger. You call me colored boy. You call me black. You call me African. I'm not an African. Because the continent was not named Africa until a white man named it Africa. So what are we? Planetary. Thank you very much. <laughs> she has a question for you. Yes, I just want to end because people have been talking about coast spirulina and wheatgrass is so good. I want you to just explain to them that Who are you? it's not good for I'm Bayana. Bayana asked the question about spirulina and wheatgrass. Mm. Spirulina? I mean, where does spirulina grow? It's hybrid. And what about the wheatgrass? Hybrid. Wheat kernels. When I, in my embryonic stages, and I must admit it was later than that because I was in New York practicing this thing already, and I was using wheat to produce wheatgrass to be juice, and here I am with my little cup of wheatgrass juice. I got the best chlorophyll in the world. Man, a little lady, 94 years of age, named Mrs. Holloman, said, you're out of your mind. You're not going to recommend that to yourself and to no one else. Why, Mrs. Holloman? Because this stuff is poison. Oh. Wheatgrass juice. Wait just a minute. Is wheat natural? I said, no. The fendo is natural. The teff is natural, but not the wheat. You make bread out of fendo. You make bread out of the arm, which is the uh, teff which is the Ethiopian that makes the injera. The brown injera is made from teff. But as far as the wheat, oh, we have to remember the amaranth, which is natural. But this thing we call wheat definitely was made in Europe. So now, when we grow this kernel and we squeeze it, we are getting sugar and starch. So in my, my brain tell me, don't use it no more. So what you use? sprout something natural. So I went and got some amaranth, and amaranth seed could be acquired right now in, in, in Brooklyn. It grows all over the place. You take the little seeds, and you put them on the bed right now, and you cover them with the soil. In 21 days, the wheat grass sprout. But the amaranth would not sprout in 21 days. Why? The amaranth only sprout once a year in the spring. So I was angry because the amaranth did not sprout. Then the amaranth laughed at me and said, you want me to sprout along with something hybrid? Well, I'm very sorry. I only sprout once a year. But the product I produce is food. And when the, amar when the amaranth sprout came, oh, I was eating amaranth sprout, and I was high for about three months. I was on this high, this energy, because the molecular structure is complete, and therefore it deems that stuff electrical. If the molecular structure is incomplete, meaning a hybrid plant, it cannot be electrical. If man could make a substance in a laboratory, such as a vitamin, vitamin B, vitamin B, C, C, uh, vitamin B12, inositol, zinc, all this stuff. Hey, look, just a minute. How could you make in a laboratory a substance that would help me biologically or physiologically? If you could do that. And if you could really do that, then you are God. Only nature of God makes something electrical. No man could do that. I will give a simple example. On the planet, minerals are expressed in two forms. One phosphate, one oxide. 
meaning what? There are 142 minerals. We begin with gold, silver, obium, iron, phosphorus, silver, I mean iron, magnesium. They come in the form of a rock. 142 different minerals in the planet. They come in the form of a rock. But that rock also have a plant that is representative of that mineral. The plant contain gold. Gold? You may ask, well, why should it be so difficult for you to understand that? Don't you take burdock for iron? And what's the difference with iron and gold? They both are minerals. But now you have them in a plant form. Mm -hmm. Why a plant form? Because the plant, in sending its root into the soil, it converts that solid rock into a liquid digestible substance. The scientists call that process of, conver of conversion iontrophorosis. Iontrophorosis could only be accomplished by a plant not a laboratory. You can't take a piece of rock that is iron into a laboratory and get a liquid from it that's going to be digestible because now it becomes non-electrical. The plant makes it electrical. Mm. And when you drink it, it is pre-digested for you electrically so that no one snow you. <laughs> the minerals that the body needs cannot be found in any health food store. Mm. No vitamin C vitamin B, vitamin A. The body is not made up of any alphabetical order. It is made up of minerals. Okay. And when those minerals have been depleted by the presence of disease, a disease ensues. Okay. So you have to replace them in a natural form, in the form of a rock or a plant. A plant. Because it is alive and it is electrical. Why does it have to be electrical? Because the body is electrical. How could you feed an electric body dead food? You just can't do that. That's not consistency. Yes, sir. Yes, Dr. Sadie. So, basically, when a person goes to a hospital and they're given so-called treatments, now, basically, we know when somebody is treated for something, that has nothing to do with being cured. And when you have something like the American Cancer Society, they mention nothing about curing people. They're just a cancer society, which is they study, study some more, get some more money and keep studying, but never really finding a cure when the cure basically is something that's natural in the ground where the person can heal, heal itself, the body can heal itself eventually. But yet what they do is they propagandize a natural disease and made a big multi-billion dollar industry. Of course, and they're right 100%. If I was a Caucasian, Thank God you're not. Defending my people and my economic position, do you think that I would undermine that position by telling the world, here is a black man named Dr. Sebi that have cured diabetes, sickle cell anemia, yeah. leukemia. Then what's going to happen to his laboratories? What's going to happen to his pharmaceutical laboratories? Well, but why should we be concerned with the American Medical Association? Anyway. Why should we be concerned with that? I know I weren't. And what, what's the name of this, um, this medical thing that goes uh, to Europe and these spread AIDS among our folks? What is it? What's the name of the, oh, the World Health Organization? Yes. The World Health. Who? Yeah. Who? They tell you I mean, who? Joe. What do you think about them? They're going all, all over the place. Jeff Owl. <laughs> I was in Washington, D.C. in the year of 1982. And this brother, who is a doctor, who worked for the WHO, personally told me that they threw in the tower 20 years ago. That they knew that there was no cure for any disease. They never had one. I mean, the physician didn't go to school to learn to cure anyone. The discipline just doesn't house that. So, again, we should not be bringing them up. It's of no consequence. The only thing is they're killing our folks up there in Africa. When are they going to learn? They're killing our folks in Africa? Yeah, they're all coming up with AIDS. Where do they get AIDS from? AIDS is a, a thing of the mind. 
not real. It's memory. But the African needs to be killed. Oh, well. I mean, coming from a, coming from Dr. Sebi, to say that his family need to be killed. I know what you're saying. But that's a fact. The African have turned their back on their mother. In fact, the African has never regarded a black woman as being equal to a male. So when you abandon your position, you need to pay the dire consequences. When you abandon your mother, and I'm not talk, talking only saying about the biological mother, I'm talking about that greater mother, Africa. They changed Africa. They made an exchange for Europe in Africa. They deserve to die. Everyone that dies deserves to die, or else you would not be dying. I think you're right. Oh, I know I'm right. They wouldn't be dying now. That's true. <laughs> because what is it about the 144,000 that will, will go and leave and whatever they're going to do? So you got to have somebody that got some sense. You, you, I, and it's not there. That's why I said that I would prefer to take a shoeshine boy from New York and put him in the presidency in Africa, in any country, and he would do a better job than those that are there now. Because common sense just step out the window. The African doesn't need anything that came from their ancestors. What do they eat? They eat rice. They eat potatoes. Well, you know. Carrot? Potatoes. Sweet potato. No, they eat the white potatoes. potatoes. Those that come here that I've seen, they eat the white potato in with the rice, and they eat uh, the carrots. Have you ever, have you ever gotten, have you ever tried to put a, a, a salad bowl beside an African before he eat and see if he's gonna eat the salad? Oh, he's not gonna eat that. <laughs> you, can, you, you can put a bush rat and some rice. Uh, oh. We got room for one more question on this segment yes. and then we're gonna continue yes, on. One last question and I think it's very pertinent here. Um, it seems to be the greatest thing that seems to be plaguing us at this moment and that's AIDS of course. Everyone knows someone who has it. I know someone who has it. And um, pretty much I'd like to get a roundabout viewpoint on, on what you feel about that. Yeah. Well, this book that you raised, if you notice carefully, AIDS. The good news is HIV doesn't cause it. Well, it <laughs> And under here it says Peter Duesberg. This man was the only man that made a statement that was in my favor when I was going through my litigation. This man's a white man. Peter Duesberg said that AIDS was not the result of a virus, and he agreed with me. I have yet to have a brother, physician, or otherwise, that openly agreed with me. Peter Duesberg did. So, this man was taken, well, he was at the University of Berkeley, California, Duisburg, microbiology, biologists, they remove his grants and kick him out, but that was okay. Now they have an organization known as HEAL, and he's heading that. It's all over the world now. In fact, someone wants me to get in touch with them because they're looking for me. But this man was right. AIDS was long coming. Uh, this man, and by the, another doctor, by, by the name of... Uh, he was a protege of this man, Mr. Duesberg. What's the name of the other one? Dr. Gallo? No, the, the other one, uh, Dr. I can't call his name, and I could see him. He said that when they went to Africa and inoculated the Africans with the smallpox uh, vaccine, that it was the beginning of AIDS. Strecker? Smallpox and polio, both, but smallpox was the reason. Strecker. Strecker, Dr. Strecker. And we're going to, on that note, we're going to be right back to at, at the next segment. You'll see it next week, okay? Hold tight now. Dr. Love and uh, Dr. 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 Roshan and Dr. Prince, they sat in council, and Phil Valentine was one of them, to kick me out of New York. A brother that cure age, you want him to kick out of New York? Well, Phil Valentine did that. Phil Valentine, all of them turn against me. Which one they really the interest of black folks. And there's a brother among us. Say, for instance, 10 of us set out to do research. A nine failed. The brother over here 
Mr. Simmons. Oh yeah, let's talk. Found the cure for AIDS. What us nine should do? What you have to Come to you. Because you did the research and found it. Sir Valentine, Dr. Love, Kanye, Dr. Prince, Dr. All of them said, good luck. I said, thank you very much. Uh, what about Dr. Barbara Justice? She, she don't like me. And she is right. She should not like me. And I hope that she see this tape. Because Dr. Sabi loved the idea that Barbara Justice doesn't like him. She have to live with that hate herself, and I hope that the hate does not la last too long. <laughs> also, 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 at the Million Man March, Dr. Sabi, um, there was a, uh, I was there, well, the, and well, Dr. she has worked with him, the Million Man guy Muhammad. from yeah. Washington, she's worked with him. Yeah. Are you talking about Dr. Alim? Yeah. Oh, that's and, a beautiful... And Dr. Barbara Johnson said they, worked they brought together. this young brother up who they claimed they had oh, cured yeah. of AIDS for three years of well, treatment they of did to Cameron from Kenya. It is impossible. Sandiford. Look what they did to him. And he was on the air to be cured. And they took him over to Kenya. And because, um, because of his, the lack of money, you know, money always plays the role, and uh, lack of care, I'm going to put that in, that's my word, that Sandiford died. He had to. Even if I take him on, he would have died. What is Kimron? Do anyone here know what is Kimron? Synthetic. It's what? A it's a mix of something. AZT. Ooh. Made right here in the United States, sent to Japan to be yes. put together as a compound, and then taken to Africa and administered. Yes. Oh, that's true. See, that's true. Yeah. See, also, years ago, uh, my father got out of the hospital, and he was Get feeling very weak. This was like 1988. And his and, name? And his name, Professor George Simmons. And I remember my father was feeling very weak and he didn't know what to do. So his friend sent him to Dr. Barbara Justice. And she looked at him and she said, All you can do is really is just pray. And wait. And wait to die. <laughs> so what happened was a few of my father's friends uh, took him to see Dr. Sadie over here. Amen. And my father, if you recall the first time you met him, he came to your office, told you all his problems. He was this and that, and you, you said that you didn't even look at him. You said you were busy reading something, <laughs> and you told him, "Don't worry about it. You'll be all right in a couple of weeks or a couple of months." He said you'll be back teaching, with, you know, without uh, too much of a problem. And lo and behold, my father followed what uh, you told him to do, and he was back teaching. And he's running around friend. now in no, 1995. <laughs> and now he's down in Honduras at your institute. And he went down there with uh, a lot of different maladies, diabetes, uh, prostate, uh, cancer, high blood pressure, uh, you know, a whole bunch of things. And he said within two days of being down there, he was ready to run some Olympic events. And he did. Wow. Yeah. And his sugar was down to 93. What? And the toilet that was supposed to be amputated no longer has to be amputated. What? Mm. All, and his hair was growing back, did he tell you? Yeah. His hair was growing back <laughs> where it was falling out. The village you are talking about is here. This is the village. Okay, let me hold it there for a few. Let's get a nice tight shot of it. Okay. All right. We see the tanks of the thermal waters. This is the Usha village in Central America. And you see these tanks that, are con that house the water. They are holding tanks. Oh. The thermal water contain a pH of 8.8. .8. It is not like what they have in other places. I heard that there's a hot spring in Cottonwood, Alabama. We don't have a hot spring in Honduras. We have a thermal spring. And the difference of a thermal spring is that the thermal spring is precipitated by volcanic activity, which means that the water has a high concentration of sulfur and phosphorus. Not so for a hot spring. A hot spring is precipitated through a bed of zeolite that's under the ground. And as you know, that zeolite is a mineral that boils water. That doesn't necessarily make a thermal. So what makes the difference? That one has sulfur and phosphorus and oxygen in large amount. Which means what to the body? It means that the body is receiving a large amount of hydrogen ion concentration that relaxes the body immediately. It plays a very good role on the central nervous system. Stress is gone immediately after you enter the water.
And that was the first thing that I did for the professor when he got there. I said, before you eat or go to sleep, you go down there and you take a bath. And we took him down there, he took a bath. Next day he was rejoicing. Now what, what happens when stress is relieved from the body? Well, the body begins to normalize itself and the hormones begin to take their message where they should go. When there's a nerve condition, hormones tend to contract or retain or they don't do their work because they are held back. There's a nerve condition. You know, like even the muscles contract. Your face, the muscle in your face contract when there's muscle problem, when there's nerve problem. Bellman pause is one. Bellman pause is caused mainly by emotional reaction and it pulls the muscle in the face to one side. And when the person relaxes again, the muscle relax. So the remedy in, in Bellman's palsy is to get into an unstressful or relaxed state in your situation would be to take one of these baths. That's right. It's not one of these baths. You take bath twice a day. And then you take also the therapy, the internal therapy, which is what? The pavana, the cordoncillo negro, the cipress, and yes, my most favorite, the Drago. These are plants that you will never hear in the American Standard Pharmacopoeia. You don't even hear these herbs in the mouth of the herbalist in Honduras or in the United States. And for that matter, even in Honduras, you go to Honduras and ask people the herbs I use, they don't even know them. Because they're too busy reading herbal books. And they're not in the herbal books. And those that are in the herbal books are hybrid. I wish very much that you could meet Dr. Anthony Andolph. And he is, I guess they call him, uh, you, you can keep it over there. Uh, he, but that, but Thailand? He calls him an ethnobotanist. Something, whatever. Herbology. He went, in, he went to school and got that. And, uh... I don't think I want to meet the brother now. You know, not because I would not like to meet my brother, but I can't exchange or even entertain someone that has been educated. Remember, I said, the reason why the healer is not healing today is because he has been educated. You want to hear a beautiful one? Above all else, Dr. David Ayensu. Dr. David Ayensu is a member of the Smithsonian Institution. There is a program out known as East Meets West, meaning African or Eastern medicine against Western. They begin to show where this African in Africa took some herbs and put on this lady's head because she was crazy. He took a knife and opened her skull. Ooh. He took some smoke and he smoked her around. And Dr. David Ayensu is talking about the herbs of his people. He's from Ghana and he's a member of the Smithsonian Institution. Ooh. Dr. David Ayensu is the brother that is looking for the cure of leukemia using the pink periwinkle, the rosy periwinkle. Well, I don't know how Dr. Ayensu expect to derive from the rosy periwinkle the cure for leukemia when the rosy periwinkle is also an acid plant. And as for leukemia, we have cured leukemia long before Dr. Ayensu even dreamed of coming on with the rosy periwinkle. But we go back again. And we find that in the end of the program, East meets West, which is approximately a 25 years old program, showing, comparing Western medicine against ancient medicine. And guess who wins every time? Ancient. No. What? No. No. Western medicine, the allopathic. In the end, Dr. David Ayensu and his colleagues said, well, you can clearly see that traditional medicine uh, you know, it's all right, you know, but it falls short because you can't really uh, measure the dosage uh, for consistency. Uh, so modern medicine is by far the best on the end of the program. I said, that was so beautiful. But I knew that the day would come in which the philosophy that Dr. David Ayensu is supporting and the African biomineral balance would come face to face one day. And it happened. Dr. David Ayensu called me and said, I've heard about your works in leukemia. But we are looking for the cure of leukemia with the rosy periwinkle. I said, Dr. David Ayensu, we already cured leukemia. So you could just squash that. Just go to something else. But 
That's 12 years ago that I told him that. 12 years ago, black America, and still now, does not show the interest into our health and healing the way we should. All of the healers in New York, and I could call their names, they all read books. If I take Dr. Phil Valentine and Dr. Love and Dr. This, that, 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 that into the forest, they would know a natural herb from an artificial one. But we can't blame the brothers. They was ill-prepared because they were prepared by Caucasian. On, on, on the subject of you're not wanting to meet up with a particular individual. This is this is for clarification. Yes. It's not that you don't want to meet them, but based on your experience of dealing with individuals who come with certain credentials and paper from the establishment or the system schools, that you know that there's a, a great difficulty in in a back and forth in a sharing. Your response. My response is this. We are told that the brother that the sister want me to meet is an ethno botanist. What do they cure? He, he searches, researches different plants. I'm only asking what do they cure? Research is 150 years old. We could research and research and research and research and research. We want to cure. We don't want to research. And just research, research, research. What does he cure? Well, he has different uh, plants. He tells you that you can take that will cure. He's no, hold it. How does he know that? What does he cure? He, he said he's, been taught, he's, from, he's from Africa, and he was taught by his father, grandfather, so forth, and he said he only uses plants that are from the homeland. you mind if I ask the question again? All over the world. What does he cure? Any disease. He cure AIDS? I'm sure he does. Well, that's good. If he cure AIDS. I'm the only individual to have diagnostic sheets showing from five different laboratories around the world that they have been cured of AIDS. I don't say it. I got diagnostic sheets. And that's important. Who else have those diagnostic sheets? Thank you. So I can't lend myself to someone that says that it does. Where's your proof? Speak of that, Dr. Spavey. Um, from being an activist, one of the things I ventured into was AIDS activism and five years ago I used to go to a few ACT UP meetings and of course that was sponsored by Burroughs Welcome and the European Allopathic Medical Establishment and then later on a group, an organization started called HEAL you may have heard of the Human Education AIDS Liaison which people like Dr. Strecker and others Peter Duisburg, Peter Duisburg supported that group and um, HEAL of course I'm sure if they could find you because many of us thought you when you left left us in New York City, we just felt so abandoned. Why can't black people find me instead of heal? Although, that's right. And that's more important to me than heal. But black people are not interested in their health right now. No. But Latin Americans are interested in it because right now, we have a cadre of people who have taken to the forests of Brazil, Peru, Chile, Honduras, Guatemala, Salvador, who's right now doing research in the forest. None of them are Americans, and none of them are blacks. Why? We talk, and we talk, and we talk, and we research, and we research, and we research, and we spend all of our life researching, and disease is running rampant. And not only that, every minute you, in our communities right now, we don't need to go with the historical story. Well, you have to start someplace. You do have to, to begin in research. That's a sorrowful position. Well, we have well, black I, I, That's a very sorrowful you position. You don't know, you got to start somewhere. How long is research? My research took me two years, and we cure sickle cell anemia, we cure AIDS, and we cure blindness. Two years of research. But these other men have 25 years under their belt, and what do they cure? You're absolutely right on that. But what I was saying <coughs> is you had to start in research in the beginning. But in, in the beginning. it wasn't even, I call it research, because my grandmother was the one that did it. See, my grandmother was a healer, and, I don't, and she didn't go to school. So what kind of research she could have done? Brother Sabi, research, <laughs> research can be likened to running a relay race. Oh, yes. If somebody else has covered the ground, and you know about it, then you pick up the race from where they are. But if the race started off heading in the wrong di direction, you, you lose. <laughs> because well, the finish line is receding well, faster than you can run. <laughs> we heard that. <laughs>
question. Right. What happens is that <laughs> what happens is that you continually pass the baton on, but there's no finish line. Right. <laughs> right. It's behind you. And running oh, and running. It's behind you. So what you? So I don't want to hear about research. So what you have? In fact, in South America, people don't bring to me these questions. Not in South America. I live in South America. They say, Dr. Sebi, we know of no one that cures the disease that you have cured. So you have the blessing of our country. Honduras has given you all the privilege to practice your craft, regardless to what the world said. You can't go to Africa. I said, no. Although you're an African by heritage, I said, but I can't go there. They kicked me out. So the need to research can be, can be attributed in part to the conditioning that many of us have been through yeah. to say, well, where's your research? Whereas you point out that the, the app What have you done? <laughs> Not what have you researched, what have you done? That's Latin America, but that in America is arrogance. But we are arrogant, as Dr. As, as Professor George Simmons said, that I am considered an arrogant individual. Yes, Dr. Sebi. Not only you are arrogant, everybody in Honduras is arrogant. You've been independent since 1824. You have earned your position to be arrogant, and especially when it comes to the art of healing. If the rest of the physicians and herbalists have healed what you heal, they too would be more arrogant than what they are. Oh, arrogant. Arrogant is a demonstration. I don't know what it means. Of, 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 of being self-confident. We don't see that. And that's okay. So it doesn't among, matter. But I'm saying, we don't see that among our people, so that when we do see it among our people, people of color, even people of color will react, that person is arrogant. Because they're conditioned too. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. But I want to I get to, to some, some basic ailments real quick. I'm Brother Leroy. And, and some basic ailments I want to deal with are those that some of our average people are being confronted with right now. Young brothers are, are beginning to show up with kidney ailments, you know, right here in the city. And what would you attribute kidney ailments to at a young age? Also, sisters, young sisters having uh, fibroid tumors, et cetera. Re reproductive age. problems. Reproductive problems at a young age, when we say young age in their 20s, something that would normally show up later on. Thank you. The male and female. Would you say that starts in the colon? No. It doesn't start in the colon. What happened? I used to say that too, that every disease begins in the colon. Yeah. But if that was true, what have us eaten the things that go to the colon that makes us sick? Why are we eating the things that enters the colon that makes us sick? It is before the colon, right here. The mind. Not the mind. I don't know what the mind is. I have never known what, I have never found the mind. I hear talk about the mind. I don't know what that is, but I do know this, that when the brain is confounded, you, you, you have problems. <laughs> you may put anything in your mouth. You see this hand and this big mouth goes in there? It hasn't hit the colon yet, right? It starts here. Which is the brain. The brain. The brain has been confounded. The computer has been confounded. G in, G out. Garbage in, garbage out. But we don't want to see that. We want to rely on spirit mind and soul when these are the properties of what supernatural well i don't live in a supernatural world i live in a natural world in the natural world there is no such thing as the mind there is no such thing as a spirit or a soul you know you mentioned on one of your tapes uh, about uh, you wanted to become so spiritual and you went and you met some of these people and they had a stomach that was meeting you in the door and you said this is spiritual i don't think i want that no I, I don't subscribe to spiritual because all the spiritual people are big and fat. And, and they got problems with their head. So I knew there was something I had to stay away from. But you know, I, I didn't pursue it any longer to investigate to see if there was validity in this or not. I was going to ask you that question. As far as our people in the New Age movement are caught up in this new this spirituality gig right now, um, what is the relation, you would say, then, between this spirituality or, let's say, in the motherland or here or in the Native American, the Native Aboriginal healers or witch doctors or roots people, is, is, there, is, this, is there a science or is this fantasy or is there a combination? What's the reality in that matter, in this spirituality? I don't know what it is. <laughs> because if, if, if it is so equitable, 
I mean, among the Native Americans, the indigenous Indians, as we call them, the highest alcoholic incidence in the world is among them. How come they can't even cure that? We got problems. Among the Africans, they eat in Gari. Gari and Bushra. What happened to them? We got problems. Spirituality is a word that came out of Europe. Even the very word is European, not like the word African. That's not African. That's not us. That's European. The country is called African, and by them, you call it African. There's a word they call spirituality. What is it? I don't know. Yeah. Not even interested. I find it uh, uh, If you were given the assignment to, uh, to open a school, not here, please, uh, open a school, and and uh, get your teachers to be to start teaching. Where would you begin? Would you begin in research, or would, what would you do? Or show me each plan? Or how would you go about? Oh, I gotta go way before the plan. Okay. I gotta show you where we would derailed and change that environment, that brain environment. I have to change that immediately, that you could begin to see. Because with the images that you're going to see are not the images that I would see because all of us are individually put together. We are unique unlike the other. I would put the individual on a path that would avail him the privilege to see. And in seeing, then he could make a right decision, a good decision. That's all I did. And my grandmother started me out by understanding that I was not supposed to listen to anyone. No one but yourself. And if I have to go outside of me, Train your eyes towards Mother Nature, the forest, and I will do the same. Dr. Fabi, going back to these diseases and ailments, um, I know a lot of brothers and sisters who are living and those who have passed on from this quote-unquote AIDS. As a matter of fact, a young brother who was in Bellevue Hospital, who I went to see him three days before he died of so-called Kaposi sarcoma, and they were giving him chemotherapy, and his last days he suffered. And um, the question I want to ask you, with the body, is there any way that we can, um, if, if any disease or ailment, is there ways you can halt the progression and uh, totally eliminate... Carpossus, um, sarcoma? And all, any, any, I mean, the disease that you've dealt with, the AIDS, cancer, leukemias, to arrest the progression and eliminate all the whatever symptoms, damage... In but that's what we've been doing for the last 20 years. And restoring the full body back to... But that's the only way you could cure. Right. That's the cure. To remove that particular erosion. To remove that particular condition. Whatever condition, whether AIDS or blindness. And restore 100% health. That's the only way I could do it. Through what? An intracellular cleansing. This is what is done in Miami. We put together our compound based on an electric system. Where do you go in America or in New York and find electric food in a bottle? Where do you go? And the body is electrical. We only have to ask that one question. Is the body electrical? Yes. So therefore, it, ne it necessitates electric food. Well, where do you find that in New York? Thank you. Well, um, we're going to do our last segment and, uh, you know, in just a couple of minutes here. So, anybody got a real quick question? Very quick. Yes. Um, being that everybody's now concerned with the AIDS, uh, so-called AIDS situation, the epidemic, what have you, um, I find that the so-called lesser diseases have been virtually ignored, such as herpes and... and uh, but lupus, yes. sickle cell anemia, yes. diabetes. Right. right. Uh, and specifically, um, I have an interest in the, the sexually transmitted diseases, so-called sexually transmitted diseases, because that seems to be what you know, plagues the younger generation. And everybody, actually. Yes. So, once again, in the early 80s, where you had, uh, you know, the herpes, it was forgotten about for AIDS. What about the herpes situation? Can we answer that in the next segment? Just yes. hold on. Hold on to that answer. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.
It was asked about the sexually transmitted diseases, those that are lesser are considered lesser, but they are not lesser. There's only one disease. There never been two diseases in the world. There's only been one disease, the compromising of the mucous membrane. And the mucous membrane of the African has been compromised 400 years now. What has the African ate since he left Africa that is really equitable to his system? What and he has not eaten anything. So therefore, the biological structure has been weakened over a period of 400 years. And in weakening the biological structure, then you may get lupus, you may get herpes, and you will get anything, anything coming your way. because the body has been deprived and the immune system has been compromised. And the immune system is responsible for diabetes, for leukemia, for sickle cell, for every disease in the world, including death. So don't only attribute AIDS to the immune system. If your immune system is strong, you cannot get sick with any disease. So we're going to straighten that. And Dr. Without us looking for cures, a lot of us do, a lot of people, I'm not sure everyone, we do have some people who are just plain damn ignorant. And they don't want, they want to die. So let, like I said, let them make their maker or whatever. Most of them. But, most of people. But there are some people who do want to be cured. And they do, they want to touch that raiment of Jesus, whatever. That garment. And so, I would, like, I, we, we, you're here now. I'm glad that I've been blessed by the ancestors and people to be here in your presence. Um... We want to learn now how to be cured, not learn. We want the process to begin and that deterioration, because that means we all have deterioration. No one can look at one person. All of us, I'm including myself. Because I have a better body and I don't have no, my doctor says. Speaking of that, the question is now, what is the relation then between, since the discovery of medical science 265 years, uh, what is the relation then between laboratory reports and the, the, the hematology or pathology or, or the blood breakdown? Is there any validity or goodness out of this allopathic Western medicine, the microscope, and the relation of natural electric food? And if you want to see a germ, then, then you get a microscope. And if you get a, a wound by a gunshot or an appendix has burst, you need to be open real quick. So there is place for the knife, but under extreme conditions. But as far as curing diseases, there's only one way. And that is the herbs, because they are electrical. Their molecular structure is complete. They will assimilate. They are carbon-based. That's why in Egypt you see we had scaffolds and knives, but what was the food of Egypt, of the Kemetic civilization? Kemetic? Those people were hybrid, isn't it? Don't get angry. Be for real, stand up. Be for real. They were hybrids. That's why Cleopatra had to go all the way to Italy to find a man. She couldn't marry some black man. She could not do that because she wasn't black. She was a mixture of Persian, Greeks, and black. That's a hybrid person. So the Egyptians ate hybrid food. Didn't they eat ducks? Weren't they the one that really started to make of garlic? What could Egypt eat? And didn't Imhotep one, one of the first physicians that was given the credit as being and attributed to as being the first doctor, did he open the human body? Yes, he did. He opened the human body. If the human body was supposed to be open, it would have a zip on it. Thank you. <laughs> Amen, go right there. Yes, doctor, well, yeah. yeah, okay, Dr. Savi. You're down in uh, Florida. Is that telephone number 305-252-1800? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, I'm sorry. That is the number in Miami where we have just recently moved from Puerto Rico. Our laboratory, our factory is there. Um, okay. And now, what's this number in Brooklyn? That's 718-722-9386. Yes, that's the city. Yes, that's a number they could get in contact with. Oh. Okay, thing that, that they need. Now, Reggie would like to ask you a question. Uh, there's another medical issue that um, I would like to bring up that's a, a big concern in this country, and that's paralysis. Excuse me. Now, how is the process of uh, curing somebody with paralysis uh, go, as far as you're concerned? The African Biomineral Balance has addressed to that many, 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 many years ago, many, many times. El Salvador, my friend, 
Mr. Irvin Sanders, father-in-law, was in a wheelchair for 18 years. He's walking. Zadia Ife from, from New York, from a uh, university of what? What university up in, in uh, upstate New York? Uh, everyone knows about it. Syracuse. No, no, not Syracuse. The other one. Uh, yeah, well, Harvard. Harvard. No, another one. But Cornell. She's a Cornell, and she came to us, and she was in a wheelchair for 18 years. She's walking now. And many, 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 many more. Paralysis is what? When the central nervous system has allowed the muscles to contract. Or that the nervous system is not sending enough electricity to make them move. So what do we do? We perform the, again, the intracellular cleansing and applying the African biomineral balance to regenerate the body with electricity. And that could only be done the African way. Well, I wanted to ask you too. I'm having, you know, I was 20, 20 eyes. But now I don't see as well. I had to get my glasses sometimes just to see the whole thing. Yeah, get you yeah. clear this way. So, but I don't want to wear these. I want to cure that. Get it back to where it was. What do I do here? Well, I had an experience in Chicago with my own eyes. I don't have any problem with my eyes, but I talk. I could read, I could see, clear. But then one day, I decided to do urine therapy. All right. I used my compounds for 20 days. I fasted a month. I fasted for 29 days, nearly a month. And after my urine was as clear as water, I decided to drink it. I was drinking it twice a day, along with a gallon of water. At the end of four days, I was completely blind. Completely blind. I was blind at that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I began to see on Tuesday. I bought some blinders. I told my daughter, I said, go buy me some blinders, please, quick, because the sun is reflecting my eyes. It's hurting me. She said, okay. She went and she got the blinders and I put it on my eyes. Oh, and I was happy. Oh, I wasn't blind. I was in darkness for five days. At the ending of the fifth day, on the sixth day, I was in Chicago. I was on uh, Stony Island, where we had the center. When, my, when I took the blinders off, I could read the finest letter across the street. Mm. So why was I blind? Because it was breaking down all of that inflammation. Oh, and the Coming down. You. As it crossed the eyes, I had to go blind. Mm. You see? Mm. Oh, I see, yeah. So what you need is a total fast uh -huh. for a while, and then you're in therapy. And then you continue on the diet, and your eyes going to come back immediately. Clear. Because that happened to Dr. Clark, too, because, you know. Dr. Clark? Yeah. Well, you know. It's not too late for him, is it? It's not too late for anyone. Okay. But how much indebted is Dr. Clark to the Caucasian or to his mother, well, fathers? Do Dr. Clark is a beautiful brother. And Dr. Clark need help. And Dr. Clark came to me. I said, Dr. Clark, you can't eat these things. Mm -hmm. And I love Dr. Clark. All of us do. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't? Mm -hmm. But Dr. Clark can't stop eating those things. So Dr. Clark is like the brother by, by the name of Chance the Williams. Mm. I went to see the brother. They told me he passed on. That's right. Yes. That's right. I went to see Dr. Chance the Williams. I said, my daughter is dying to meet you because you wrote the book. Destruction of Black Civilization. Well, in my house, my children doesn't read books. None of them, including myself. I don't read books. I just don't. Never have and never will. But that doesn't mean that books are bad. All right? But my daughter has read your book. And she's happy to know that you live. And she's happy to know that we are here today to help you. Because you're going blind. Dr. Chancellor William told me that it was okay that Dr. Cohen told him it was okay. He believed more in the Caucasian than he believed in his brother. So we just went home. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know at what level. I have one minute more here because I have to be lecturing at 3 o'clock oh, and I have to check out of the hotel. Question. Dr. Sadie, we know how bad the food is out here. What can, I know, we know if, what food would you recommend that we go buy out if there's anything in the city, food, plant, or herb, and what diet should we be eating? Well, could you just like a seven day? Just seven. Well, there is a phone number that you could call. 
that have the whole dietary program and would even help you to walk it through. The phone number is 718-629-5587. And you, get in you will get in touch with Betsy or Elizabeth Volant. She got all of the, the steps that you would take and the product that you would buy. Because when you walk in the supermarket, everything in there is artificial. So we have to select from that artificial world the least of the damaging foods. Can you repeat that number again? The phone number is 718-629-5587. And ask for? Elizabeth Volant. Okay. We have just a few more minutes on here. So okay. If you want to, <coughs> we stop or, or add something in here, whatever you want. So talk about sickle cell, since a lot of folks have sickle cell. Sickle cell anemia? Yeah. Sickle cell anemia. What's happening in the body and what your tonics do? When I'm asked about sickle cell anemia, my brain goes to one country, and that country is Ivory Coast. In Ivory Coast, 33% of the population has a high incidence, there's a high incidence of sickle cell anemia, 33%. I talked to Dr. Uh, Landenberg, Pierre Landenberg, he's a Frenchman, about sickle cell anemia at Howard University. He disregarded me. But I have cured sickle cell anemia, I told him. And I asked him, what is sickle cell anemia? He said he didn't know. I said, I thought so. I said, because uh, sickle cell anemia is when the blood plasma has broken down into a sickle. Break, broken down by what? Mucus have seed into the plasma, into the cell itself, and break it and disunited the cell. Removing the mucus, the cell unites again. And then, to maintain that level, you have to feed the patient large doses of iron phosphate, not ferrous oxide, iron phosphate. And I don't know any way in America that says that. But sickle cell is when the same mucus that breaks down the cells in the nasal passage that cause sinusitis has now broken down the blood plasma and break it into a sickle. And now we have to replace the mineral that has been lost. And because iron phosphate, iron incidentally, is the only but the only magnetic mineral in the planet. Being magnetic, it pulls other minerals to it. So therefore, when you take iron, you take all others proportional balance. So when you take this iron, they begin to see result in less than five minutes. Malt liquor, what damage is that doing to, we have a lot of brothers who are drinking 40s and you know, that we're just being sold this particular drink. What is happening in the body? What is happening to the mind when you consume that? The liver is damaged. Malt liquor is made with what? Barley. And then they use also another substance in the yeast. And isn't yeast the seat for infection? They call it what? Chlamydia? Yeah. Yeast mm. is the bed for disease. But again, since we have not had scientists, researchers, as they are called, to come forth with the proper research or study, we fall short. We're vulnerable. We are vulnerable. I mean, I just came to New York 10 years ago, and they were drinking carrot juice. Carrot juice? Well, that tells me something. And they're eating beans in the name of health. That tells me that something is wrong. So therefore, we have to stop it. The brother that came from D.C., there was a war on AIDS. And I was taken to, to uh, Manhattan. War on AIDS! Well, I had to bomb. I went. Dr. Barbara Justice and Dr. Prince disregarded me. And then they said, then they said, Dr. Alim is coming from Washington. I said, the Muslim brother, they said, yes. I said, he's coming with a very special message. I said, yes. What is he coming to tell us? That AIDS kill black people. <laughs> oh. I said, we needed to hear that from Dr. Alim. Wow. Because we were totally oblivious to that fact. <laughs> but the question I'm going to ask about Dr. Alim, is he a Muslim? They said, yes. Well, what does a Muslim that follows Allah doing? practicing the medicine of bliss that they call the devil. There is a contradiction. Well, well, allow. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Sadie, 
what can we do as uh, folks here in this country who are concerned that have some semblance of consciousness? What can we do here to help you get the message across to the people who need to know, the people who need this kind of information and cure? What can we do here to help you to, uh, you know, to expound uh, the greatness of medicine that you're giving to us? When the Japanese scientist said that he worked with the immune system, all of Japan got behind him. He didn't ask them. They got behind him. And he got the Nobel Peace Prize for only working with the immune system. We don't work with the immune system. We cleanse the immune system. When the Jews in Israel needed help, they didn't come asking help us. They send the help. So you ask me, what could I say to the black race of America that would help the Usha research? I don't know. If they help me, fine. If they don't help me, still fine. I don't know. All donations. That's on you. That's on the black populace. That's not on us. We did our job. Oh, anybody got another question? Yes. Yeah. Excuse me. I'd like to ask Dr. Savi um, about cancer. To explain how cancer um, gets started in the body. The same way a common cold started. In any part of the body, any way cancer appears, it means that there is a condition that has manifested over and above because it has been progressively getting worse unattended or unknowing. There's no difference with cancer and a common cold. The mucus in the nose stayed a long time. They call it sinusitis. And as they begin to eat the cells, they call it cancer. And that's whether in the reproductive organ, in the breast, in the head, in the brain, in the eye, wherever. It's all mucus. Um, you've heard of Dr. Tory. Dr. Tory from Chicago. Uh, well, he teaches about uh, the worms in the body, how they got there, what cysts is made of because he says that the worms have to do do in your body and that's where you get these cysts and things like that. You heard, heard of that? I disagree with that. A cyst, when you open a cyst, inside of the cyst, all you find is That's all you find. Also, but I can't, I, I can't challenge anyone or anything, but I do know this, that Dr. Torrey has compounds that I know came from the Caucasian books. So in other words, Donald Torres, the from Los Angeles, California. Yeah. That's who groomed him. Right. The white boys groomed him. So in other words, you're saying that that's a protection. What's a protection? When, when the cyst, because you said it's got carbon in it. No, calcium carbonate, hardened. The mucus has hardened, and now it is growing. That's where you. And things like that. You heard it? I disagree with that. A cyst, when you open a cyst, inside of the cyst, all you find is calcium carbonate. That's all you find. Also, but I can't, I, I, I can't challenge anyone or anything, but I do know this, that Dr. Torrey has compounds that I know came from the Caucasian books. So in other words... Donald Torrey, the from Los Angeles, California. Yeah. That's who groomed him. Right. The white boys groomed him. So in other words, you're saying that that's a protection. What's a protection? When, when the cyst, because you said it's got carbon in it. No, calcium carbonate. Hardened. The mucus has hardened, and now it is growing. Uh -huh. And then it's going to burst uh -huh. and eat you up. So your tonics do what? My tonics, what, what, our tonics, the Usha tonics, the el electric food. To that, to this. Well, we reduce it. Didn't you see at Usha Research I when did. the lady passed the tumor? I, I did. And it was in the refrigerator? I was there. Thank you very much. She brought it in. She brought it in a bottle. What? And we put it in the freezer at tumor. This size. Mm, I saw it. How'd they come out? It passed out of her. That's the only way it's supposed to come out. Yeah. Mm. Well, well. So you know, you step, you're right. Our bodies don't have zippers. So... Any cleansing is supposed to come out through the regular holes, the nose, the mouth, the... Like Taurus Henderson. Taurus Henderson, Chicago, Illinois, 1990. She had a tumor in her brain. And this is recorded on Channel 21, on Channel 19, in Chicago, by Brother Rashid. She passed a tumor through her nose. From her brain. Not only her. But she was cured. This, this, this uh, Caucasian male 
from uh, her daughter, his daughter named Robin Bennett, called me and said, my father have a tumor in his brain, a blood clot on his brain. I said, yes. How long would it take you to take it off? I said, how long would it, you allow me? She said, I gave you a month. I said, what about 24 hours? She said, you're crazy. I said, of course. But it came off in 24 hours. And she wrote me a letter, and I have that letter. How does it look? More than black people come to you. And right now, in terms of Honduras, who are the folks who are coming to you? Mexicans, Norwegians, South African whites. I don't expect any black from South Africa to come. South African whites, Chileans, Colombians, American, Latin Americans, America, not black America. Black America uh, down there now is our most beloved professor, George Simmons. And we have this brother from DC named Anika. But the general population of OSHA are Latinos and Europeans. Um, I would like to come down to the country and do a research or, uh, because we're called African Information Communications. And uh, we, anything that concerns our people, no matter what it is, we, and health should be very important. So I'd like to come down and, and see you in your environment, so to speak. Gladys Rodriguez did. Who? Gladys Rodriguez. Gladys Rodriguez is a Latin American from Santo Domingo. Okay. This woman saw me on Univision, which is the Latin American International Network. You know something the Latinos put me in the International Network? Mm -hmm. Gladys saw it, and the very next day she went down to Honduras. In fact, she, she had the council from Honduras in trouble, had him fired, because he was giving her a hard time. She went down to Honduras, got her compound, came back, and saw what she was about. She, she was in the village, no question asked. Mm -hmm. That's Latino. But an American black person have a problem going to Honduras. Well, I don't have a problem. No, what well, most do. I mean, that's why I'm asking. You yeah. Come they ask about, yeah. is it possible? What's going to happen? Where am I going? I, hold it now. But they can run. They can run to Kentucky Fried, White Castle. <laughs> sure, but that's not our fault. Paul Thater and everywhere else. But South America, South African go all the way from Africa, and Norwegians from Oslo. Nina went down there with her tumors, and her tumor was passed. And she, not, not only that, when she got back to Norway, the doctor said, the doctor in Honduras did remove your tumors, but there's something else that he removed. Your infantile diabetic condition is gone, too. You didn't know that? Well, I didn't tell him I had diabetes. That is also cured. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy that you did this interview, and I hope that in the future that there will be more participation of black people. <laughs>